welcome back. Now time for us to speak with our Kajat guests in the house. We don't the year of people coming out to talk, say youth need to actually involve um, in governance. And apart from that, we could talk more concerning conflict resolutions for inside Wibodo, Nigeria. That's now why we get this Kajat people. We get Ambassador Tosi Adebi. Now you're going to wonder why be in actually special advisor to the president on conflict resolution on diaspora matters, ECOWAS Youth Council. And we also get Dayok Belumi, in my fellow of the West African Peace Ambassador Network and associate of the ECOWAS Youth Council. Good to have you in the house. Good morning, Good my morning. I don't say you want to actually correct me with your name. Yeah, Ade Buji, my name. Ade Buji. Ade Buji. Yes. Ade Buji. Ade Buji. Okay. Awesome. Good to have you in the house. Thank you for having us. Okay, so when would they talk about the ECOWAS and um, Youth Youth Council? What will be the focus? What will be the core objective of that kind of joint body? Now, uh, ECOWAS, good morning, my viewers, once <laughs> again. As regards to uh, ECOWAS Youth Council, like we rightly know, ECOWAS Youth Council is the youth wing of ECOWAS Commission. And the main objective of ECOWAS Youth Council is how to bring the youth under the sub region of ECOWAS states. And the ECOWAS region states is 15 in numbers. So what we actually do in, in ECOWAS Council is how to integrate the culture, the norms and values of the ECOWAS Commission, you know, um, under the platform of the youth wing of ECOWAS uh, Youth Council. So that is the main objective of ECOWAS Youth Council, bringing uh, the uh, social, cultural, political, everything that has to do with what they do at the top part of ECOWAS Commission to the level of the youth wing of the commission. So now, you know, when you talk about the ECOWAS Youth Council like this, people go the one that say, okay, we think we're an objective in the first place. Now, you, um, the, we know say don't they to establishment since 2014. Yes. Now, how will NADO actually, let's bring it to Nigeria, how will NADO actually help to bring youth together and train them the best way where you, they talk about outside talk, so now they train them? Yeah, uh, as regards to what we just asked now, we've, well, we've been having programs for youth uh, the president of Equite Council in person of uh, Ambassador Shion Ologun Williams, as at uh, some couple of months ago, precisely July, he attended a conference in Algeria that has to do with uh, uh, peacekeeping for the ECOWAS Commission. And in Nigeria now, fine, most of the youth for Nigeria are not familiar with the ECOWAS Youth Council based on publicity. But thank God now and say our president. Uh, 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 president of uh, the Federal of Nigeria, uh, President Mohamed Buhari, is now the chairperson of ECOWAS Commission. So we believe now, say, with his own you know, platform and that particular thing, that office we're in old now, he go fit help us spread the good news that, oh, even at the top end of ECOWAS Commission, there is a council which is the youth wing of ECOWAS Commission. At present now, a program is coming up on peacekeeping in, uh, uh, in conjunction with uh, the, uh, 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 that's what happened, right? West African Peace Ambassador Network in Ghana. And the purpose of it is to enlighten youth on the panacea for free, fair, and credible election. Solution. Solution yes. is violence and conflict free. We have free, fair, and credible election. Alongside with one of the presidential aspirants, which I will not want to mention his name, he is a conflict resolution you know, expert. And he is also joining us as well as regards this program. So these are programs that will be coming up in due time that will engage the youth of Nigeria as regards peace, conflict, and what have you that centers on youth. All right, now a lot of people they feel say the ECOWAS Youth Council is partisan. Now, you talk about a particular presidential aspirant yes. um, where uh, you talk today involved for yes. inside the council. Now, how you would take the bunk that statement, say the ECOWAS Youth Council is being partisan? Because we get lots of young people uh, as regards to the presidential race come 2019. Now, uh, ECOWAS Youth Council, it is an apolitical organization. We it are, is what? It is an apolitical okay. organization. That is, we are not political you know, uh, youth. We are advocates. Okay. We are youth leaders. And our purpose is to advocate for youth. Mm -hmm. I get it now. Towards knowing what is right mm -hmm. from what is wrong. Okay. We are not under so any... We are not behind any political, we are not party, any political or party or candidate at all. We are not under any political... I say it again. 
Equal Youth Council is not under any political platform, irrespective of who is even the leader of Equal's Commission. The person of, with due respect to President Manuel Barry, because the organization was not uh, was not set up to be a political, you know, party inclined. It is for the advocacy of youth and good governance. Okay, so at this point, I would like to ask them, Daya Pelumi, because I know so you be fellow of the West African Peace Ambassadors Network, will be WAPCAN. Yes. Now, some of the objectives, I know so you are in line with waiting echo as they do, but which other, how often are they always come out to let people know of the objectives of the, of the organization, what are you doing? Yes, thank you for having me once again. Um, yes, the West African Peace Ambassadors Network is fairly uh, a nascent organization. We're just growing in Nigeria. It's been in existence for some time. But um, that is why we're initiating this partnership with the Ecuador Youth Council, and part partly because I'm also an associate of the organization. But particularly, we are looking at <coughs> announcing the strengths of the youth, excuse me, announcing the strengths of the youth to enact peace across the West African corridor. Of course, you are aware of Niger, Chad, crisis involving Boko Haram, ISIS in Niger. You are aware of the uh, resource conflict that we have in Nigeria, about the S-men migrating down south because of climate change and, you know, what have you. So these are the things that we are looking at. And in resolving those conflicts, we are looking at harnessing the strength of the youth, which is very vital, you know, in this particular instance. And of course, the resources available within our own means to ensure that we prom uh, promote peace, and stability across let's the West deal Let's deal with this in practical terms. Okay, excellent. Please. Now, looking at Nigeria insecurity, yes. how you feel actually bring youths together to solve our insecurity challenges? And that is why we have to go indigenous. You know, um, our, for, our forebears, they had um, certain methods or certain ways or mechanisms that they used in resolving conflicts. It's not the, uh, I, I, I apologize, I don't want to be seen as um, against the West. It's not the Eurocentrist methods where you just come in with all forms of negotiation, bribery, coercion, and everything. They had the work methods. You remember Umbutu in South Africa where Bishop Desmond Tutu headed after the post abated era. And, you know, they were able to use spiritualism, negotiation, conciliation, and everything to bring people together on board. And that's what we are going to be honest in the youth. Of course, this is part of what... Spirituality. Spiritualism. Spiritualism. Spiritualism, you know, of course. Bishop Desmond Tutu came in from the perspective of a mm -hmm. Christian and mm -hmm. was able to appeal to people using biblical terms and all the likes. And, of course, appealing to their conscience to... Forget what had happened in the past, and of course, look for ways so to forge alliance. Work? Looking at the level where we don't <coughs> deal for Nigeria, I want us to talk about Nigeria right now. Looking at the level, how would that work? Appealing to the youth's um, conscience. We conscience. don't see a lot oh, of that's... violence starting in different states, and at this youth, some of the youth, not be perpetrators of such acts. Or would they vex because of the way they are being treated? Maybe they are dying of hunger, or maybe they are not being given certain rights where they feel so they need. So, how you want to appeal to the conscience of an angry man who never gave a tough food for him, Bele? Okay, and that's exactly one of the core benefits, I mean, core, core, core principles of uh, conflict resolution. You need to understand the fundamental issues associated with these conflicts. You need to be, you need to remove your emotion, you need to be uh, compassionate, right? You need to show empathy, but then, of course, you have to separate your emotions from the reality of things. So if you're going to be resolving conflicts as associated with the youth, you need to understand from what perspective their grievances are coming from. Let's talk about cultism. Okay. Now, a lot of states now they suffer from the issue of court. Now, the reason why would they ask you now because they, we need to find solutions yes, yes. rather than just talking on the surface. Mm -hmm. Now, cultism don't become like a big menace for inside Wobudu, Nigeria. So, in that regard, how would you be able to appeal to the conscience of the youth involved in cultism? And so, uh, for me, right, I wouldn't just say we are going to appeal to the youths only. We need to involve every stakeholder within that framework. The police, the government, because see, some of these youths, we have to be very realistic. Some of them are being pushed into this world. Some of them as a result of peer pressure, some of them as because of social influence, some of them as a result of whatever challenges that, they are, that the society has uh, um, you know, uh, shown to them. Let me use that word. You know, but I'm trying to choose my word carefully, right? But I don't want to be seen as supporting these boys for, or supporting these uh, people for whatever they are doing. But we need to understand the basics of this crisis. We need to understand the humanitarian aspects. We need to understand the social aspects. We need to understand the cultural aspects. Everything put together will help us understand the perspective of these youths. Then we can now see how we can now use the I message to pass 
that conflict resolution mechanisms across to them. But well, like you, you, you I would like come because like you now, you you've been Nigerian, you you yes. did you don't the country, and yes. you know how this cultism works. You know, waiting at least some of us um, understand or know some of the problems where they force them, be it societal problems or peer pressure. We yes. know waiting they make them go inside. Yes. So waiting be the solution where you fit recommend based on the fact say you don't you didn't inside this association where suppose they they do waiting they they coordinate make sure say conflict resolution is actually um, um, achievable. Waiting be the realistic solutions where you fit to bring out, knowing that cultism and the focus right here? So I'm going to use three key methods, right? The first one is the religious centers, right? Whether you're an artist, you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, whatever religion or non-religion practice that you, that, you, that you believe in, I think the church is the most have a vital role to play. We need to keep eating this message, hammering this message, for people to trace back their moral values to trace back their moral or their cultural heritage and see where they have to understand that even if the society is throwing punches at you, you don't need to trade back at society. That is number one. The second one is from the family. In fact, I think the family should be the primary one, the number one. We need to orientate our parents. We need to understand that charity begins at home. Whatever the parents cannot do, the church cannot do, the teachers cannot do. So I think I'll join the school and the churches or religious centers together and I'll put the parents uh, independently, I mean the, the family yeah. independently. Then the third one is the government. Mm -hmm. See, the government has to do the right out. thing. You can't take them out. The government has. The government is supposed to do the thing where go affect to. people positively. See, I know if you go still now, if I get a job, mm -hmm. if it, the only thing we go make me go still if I get a job now, be say probably the devil. With the that they would they live inside we me. We need to know where the devil is staying. Well, tell us about the event where they come. Because I want me to participate for this event. Tell us more about the event. Where well, they come. Uh, the event is tagged uh, 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 Peace and Conflict Resolution. Panakia for Free, Fair and Credible Relations in conjunction with the WAPAN, that is West African Peace Ambassador, I mean, Ambassadors Network. At present now, based on say, to do programs and to do events for Nigeria, <laughs> I don't get money. So definitely, we are looking forward to, you know, uh, companies, organizations, both private, public, and, and all that, to support this event. And both the venue has not been disclosed Why yet. Why should they support? Yeah, because, because it is a measure that would help us take youth from the streets involving in violence. So you are bringing youth together, and they are yes. not paying for it. They are so not you are paying educating for it. them. Yes, you are educating them, you know. We're meeting with the government, both the state and the federal government. We're meeting with the uh, RAN, that is Rotation Application of Nigeria. We're meeting with uh, uh, this uh, uh, NOA, National Rotation Agency, Agency, and all other organizations that can help us, you know, annex this uh, purpose for this event. Okay. So when this event happens, happen? okay. Okay, so, so if you permit me to add, you know, if you don't pay for peace, you will pay for conflict. Mm. That is the truth. You need to pay for your security. You need to be able to support initiatives that would help us to enact peace in our society. So let's pay for peace first. No, let's pay for peace so that we don't pay for conflict. Because conflict, conflict oh, pay for conflict is usually no, very, very diverse. So where this event will happen? Hopefully, I'm looking at November. 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 OK, so if people want to reach you, if you get people really interested in also it's supporting your, your program, um, how they feel reach you? OK, well, uh, you can reach us uh, by going through uh, our official website. That is ecowayouthcouncil.org, or you can you can actually, you know, send me a mail through uh, um, sa.presidentyc at gmail.com. Please, can you say that again so that they can have access to you? You can go through our official web page, www.ecowasyouthcouncil.org, or personal mail to sa.presidentyc at gmail.com. Or I'll definitely do my phone numbers with our presenters so that they can reach us please you know, do. through that. All right, Mr. Well. Daya Kwelumi, if person wants to reach you, yes, how they can they reach you? Yes, yeah, so you can reach me, I think it's just a gener generic email. All right. Be, uh, Kwelumi D1, okay. that is uh, number one, figure one, at yahoo.com. Right. And of course, I will leave my number with you too, so just in case anybody wants to do. Uh, okay, thank you so much for coming. We'll get Ambassador Tosi Ade Buji for inside the building. I'll also get Daya Kwelumi inside the building. Thank you so much for coming thank this morning. Time. To enjoy more of this, our Ogonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.